Okay, so this is what you do when your ex ran away. Don't worry, the world is still beautiful. Just find another variable. We will be using trick sub right here. Notice that we have 1 plus x squared inside, so it's a good choice to let x equal to tangent theta because we know 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta, all right? So let's get started. I will first write this down, let x equal to tangent theta, and then of course we proceed the usual way, differentiate both sides, so we get dx equals to secant squared theta d theta. And now plugging things right here. We have the integral on the top, we still have 1 over, this is parentheses, 1 plus. The x is the tangent theta now. So we have tangent, and then square, and then theta, and then we still have the second power right here. Next, the dx is the secant, square theta d theta, OK? And let's take a look at what this is on the denominator. Notice that 1 plus tangent squared theta is exactly secant squared theta, right? And don't forget, we still have another square right here. In another word, we have what? This is just integral of 1 over, all in all, this is secant to the fourth power theta, and we have this part, which is secant squared theta d theta. And now, of course, we can cancel things out. Cancel two of them, and this becomes two more on the bottom, right? Okay, here is the deal. We know secant is equal to 1 over cosine. When we have 1 over secant, that's just regular cosine. And we have secant squared on the bottom. So this is the same as saying the integral of cosine squared theta d theta, okay? How can we integrate this? We have to use an identity, right? And the identity is we have to do the power reduction formula. This is equal to 1 half. Let me just put a constant multiple in the front. And then we have 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, right? d theta like this. And once again, if you look at the red part, 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta, this is equal to cosine squared theta, right? So I just used an identity to reduce this right here, reduce the power, because now I can integrate this. Here we have 1 half, and let's put down parentheses for the result of integration. The integral of 1 in the theta world is just theta, and then let's look at this. The integral of cosine is positive sine. So I'll write down here is the positive sine. And because the input is just a constant times theta, so it stays the same, 2 theta. But when we go to the antiderivative, we have to do the chain rule backwards. Namely, we have to divide by the derivative of inside. The derivative of 2 theta is 2. Divided by 2 is the same as saying we multiply by 1 half right here. And the sign stays because the antiderivative of cosine was positive sine. So it stays the same, positive, all right? So that's pretty much it, right? And now, of course, you can distribute, distribute the usual way. So let's do that. This is the same as saying 1 half theta and 1 half times 1 half is of course plus 1 fourth, and we have sine of 2 theta like this. Well, this is not good because we end up to be in the theta world. Even though we kill the integral, but we have to go back to the x world, right? And here we end up with a double angle, which is not great neither. But you know, sine 2 theta, this is the same as saying 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. And now, you see, this is 1 half theta plus 2 and <laughs> 1 over 4. You can reduce, so you have 1 half, and now this is sine theta, cosine theta. I'm not putting down plus C yet because we're not legitimately done yet, right? We are going to figure out how we can go back to the x world. First of all, we have to utilize this information already, and also a blue pen. So let me write this down right here for you guys. We know that because tangent theta is equal to x, which is equal to x over 1. This is telling us we can draw a right triangle with a right angle here, and let's just put the theta here. And based on this right here, we know that the opposite is x, and the adjacent is 1. So this right here is x, and this right here is 1, right? 
And we also have to figure out the hypotenuse, which is this right here. And to do that, we first take the square root, and we just do one square, which is this right here, plus x squared, like that. Okay? All right, now let's see what do we have. First of all, you see that 1 half is just 1 half, but theta, tangent theta is equal to x. Of course, we can say theta is equal to the inverse tangent of x, right? So let's put that down right here. Inverse tangent of x for the theta right here. Next, we put down plus, we have the 1 half. What's sine theta then? We have to look at this triangle here. Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse, so I will put this down as x over this, which is square root of 1 plus x squared. And what's cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is, in this case, 1 over square root of 1 squared, which is 1 plus x squared, like that. At the end, let's just multiply things out to make it legitimate, all right? And we are all done, so we can just say this is it. Put a plus d at the end and box the answer.